Today, I dip into the mailbag and answer your questions. Hi, this is Michael, KB9VBR. Welcome to another edition of Ham Radio Q&A, the show where you've got the questions and I have the answers. Do you have a question that's amateur radio related? Maybe something about antennas, equipment, or even operating practices? Drop me a line at KB9VBR at jpole-antenna.com or leave a comment below and I'll respond to them. So far in the first five episodes of this show, I've generated quite a bit of interest and response. They've also spurred more than a few questions. So I'd like to take a few moment and follow up on a few of the questions asked. In the episode titled RF Chokes and Balance, I talk about why it may be necessary to add an RF choke to your antenna's feed line. YouTube user Julio asks, my question is about one to one and four to one balance. When am I supposed to use one or the other? Well, one to one and four to one are ratios of impedance. Normal impedance for amateur radio equipment is 50 ohms, so a one to one balance will convert a 50 ohm balanced antenna to a 50 ohm unbalanced feed line. Best example would be converting a half wave dipole antenna, which is actually a 70 ohms, but close enough for this illustration, to 50 ohm coaxial cable. A 4 to 1 ballon will convert a 200 ohm impedance down to 50 ohms. Some examples of antennas that could have 200 ohms of impedance at their feed point include HF verticals or off center fed dipoles, you know, like the Wyndham antennas. If you are planning to feed these antennas with coax, you would most likely need a 4 to 1 ballon to match the impedance at the feed point. A commercially built antenna will most likely tell you if you need a 1 to 1 or a 4 to 1 ballon, so read their instructions. If you're building an antenna, using an antenna analyzer like the MFJ269 will tell you what the impedance is at the feed point, which will then indicate the type of ballon needed. My go to source for information on ballons is usually the ARRL handbook. It's a great reference, but the information can be technical, and the book, unfortunately, is densely written. I'll add homebrewing or building your own 1 to 1 and 4 to 1 balance to my list of topics for a future video. In, using, in the video using RF chokes, YouTube user Candy Clover writes, Can I do this for 2 meters? I get a slight amount of noise from the TV. Well, yes you can. Televisions are a generator of radio frequency energy and their power cables can act as an antenna, causing RF interference to affect nearby receivers, like your 2 meter rig. The best solution is to add one or more snap-on ferrite beads near where the power cord connects to the TV set. Depending on the level of interference, one may be enough, but you may need to add two or more if the RFI is particularly strong. In the video, RF grounding and ground planes, I talk about why some antennas require a ground plane and others get by without it. This generated many questions on can your house's electrical system be also used as an RF ground point. Well, I've seen published information go both ways on this topic. Some people recommend using your electrical ground as an RF ground as it will help prevent ground loops. But other articles recommend using a separate ground point for RF energy. My recommendation is to use a second ground point. The reason being is that unless your house is a modern up to code electrical system, your electrical ground wire may not actually make it to the earth ground point. Old houses can have a mismatch of electrical circuits and have been updated and modified through the years. So there's no guarantee that that green wire in the electrical circuit truly runs to ground. Putting in a ground point for RF eliminates that problem. Finally, in the video selecting coax cable, it generated a few questions on if 75 ohm cable like RG6 or RG11 can be used for amateur radio purposes. Well, the short answer is yes it can, but there's a few caveats involved and on my website, I have a blog article that talks about how you can use 75 ohm coaxial cable with your 50 ohm antenna and transceiver. Click on the link below to read the full article. Well, that's it for this week. Please keep those questions coming. You can email me at kb9vbr at jpole-antenna.com or leave your question in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like us on Facebook and Twitter. You can also read more about amateur radio at my blog at www.jpole-antenna.com. Well, this is Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching, and 73.